Okay, we spent a whole lot of our last class period talking about how we can solve this differential equation. And what we did is we made a guess, and in matrix form we decided that this was the guess that made sense. I strongly encourage you to look at your notes from class to go through all of this notation and what all this means. But we made this guess, we took derivatives, uh, we took one derivative, we plugged that derivative and the guess into this system of differential equations, and we ended up getting down to this point. And we discussed how at this point in the problem, um, the only way to get answers to this problem here that are non-zero is to require that the determinant of a minus lambda i equals zero. Now it's, it's important to understand where this comes from, but when we're given a problem like this, we can actually start the problem right here. Okay, so we're going to start with the determinant of a minus lambda i, and we're going to set that determinant equal to zero. A minus lambda i is going to be 3 minus lambda 2, 3, 4 minus lambda. If we take a determinant, we go through these three pretty simple algebra steps. We can factor this quadratic, and we end up getting two values for lambda. I'll call lambda 1, 6, and I'll call lambda 2, 1. And I don't actually remember if we use this vocabulary in class, but these two values for lambda, these are called the eigenvalues. Okay, so we're doing pretty good so far. Our ultimate goal is to figure out what lambda is, and we did that, but we also have to figure out what x is. And to find x, we actually go back to this piece of the problem right here. What we can do is write down that piece of the problem and solve this piece of the problem for x for each of our two values for lambda. So let's start with lambda equals 6. And my apologies, this should be the zero vector uh, right here, not just zero. Okay, so we're plugging in lambda equals 6, and if we find a minus 6i, we get this piece right here. And as we discussed in class, both of these rows should be the same in a 2 by 2 system. So we've just confirmed that we're doing this correctly. We get 3a equals 2b in either case, or I guess you can just say a equals 2 thirds b. And we can choose a convenient value for b. I'm going to choose b equals 3 to avoid fractions and using that equation you end up getting a equals 2. So our x value, uh, we'll call it x1 to correspond with our lambda 1, our vector is just going to be 2, 3. Now as I talked about in class, you could choose a different value for b or a different value for a, and you might get uh, a slight variation from your friends on what the value of this vector actually is. But what's important is the relationship between a and b. a should be 2 thirds of b. Uh, another little piece of vocabulary, that vector that's associated with this eigenvalue is actually called an eigenvector. Okay, so we found our first eigenvector. Let's find our second eigenvector that's associated with our other eigenvalue. Again, a minus lambda i times our eigenvector is going to be the zero vector. And if we plug that in, we end up getting 2, 2, 3, 3 times our eigenvector, which we've just been calling a and b in this class. You'll notice again, good check here, um, your two equations are exactly the same. They both tell you that a is going to be negative b. So you can decide to choose, say, maybe b equals 1 or something like that, or a equals 1, or whatever you really like. And you'll get an eigenvector that is 1, negative 1, or you could also call it negative 1, 1. Either way is correct. Okay, now that we have our eigenvectors, our x values, and our lambda values, our eigenvalues, uh, we can go back up and kind of look at what we just did. Our original guess was that right there. So now we have two solutions to the system of differential equations. We have y1 is going to be e to the 6t, that was our first eigenvalue, times our first eigenvector, which I believe was 2, 3. Our second solution to our system of differential equations is e to the t, 1, negative 1. Now if you're looking for a general solution to the system of differential equations, you just combine your y1 and your y2 and linear combinations here, and you have yourself a general solution to that uh, system of differential equations. Okay, you're getting off easy on this video. This one's going to be really fast. Uh, I want to get you a video quiz. All right, here it is. Basically just go through the same process that we did there. Uh, you're just going to solve this system right there. Uh, give me a general solution. Um, in class, next time, we're going to go into a lot more depth about a little bit more vocabulary, about what the solutions to these differential equations um, maybe actually mean, and we'll just generally go into uh, a lot more depth into these problems. Uh, but for now, just uh, solve that system, and I'll see you all in class.